everybody. I'm back in a Lotus Evora. I would love to be able to tell you that I have just bought another one, but unfortunately I haven't. Today is simply a review. However, I must say an enormous thank you to Mark at Norfolk Lotus for arranging this drive for me. Norfolk Lotus, by the way, is the new name for Stratton Motor Company, at least when it comes to Hethel related products. In the sort of 12 to 18 months or so since I last drove an Evora, indeed the last one I drove was my own, a lot has changed in the model lineup. Back then you had a choice of Evora 400, you had the 410 Sport, and then the GT 430. These days you have the sole choice of this, the GT 410 Sport. Now the naming system is rather confusing, but here's what you need to know. This is the only Evora that you can buy new. It is an evolution of the old 400 and 410 Sport, with the restyling that was introduced on the 430. The original Evora styling was something I was never actually massively in love with. It worked from some angles and didn't from others. They always looked much better in the flesh than in pictures, but it never quite convinced me. The restyling introduced with the 400, I think added a much needed sharpness and aggressiveness to the car, and that really is what sold me on it. However, there were quite a few people who preferred the more traditional, rounded styling of the older car. When the 430 came out, they introduced this look, which I think is probably the best yet, and strikes a real balance between the two. One thing that has also changed rather significantly is the price. The Evora has never been a particularly cheap car, indeed the launch editions about 10 years ago were some £55,000. They were granted fully loaded cars, but they were not cheap even back then. This is now over £85,000 plus options, and some of them can be spec to essentially a hundred grand. That is a huge amount of money. Now sure, in the 10 years since this car's introduction, most of their competitors have also put their prices up. The days where 70 grand got you a nicely spec 911 are far, far behind us. However, the 911 of today is very far removed from the 911 of 10 years ago, whereas the Evora can trace its roots very directly back to that original car. That means that there's quite a few things in here which aren't great and never were. The Ford switchgear was not good on a 55 grand car and is nigh on inexcusable in a 100 grand one. The plastic switches, which are still a little bit wonky, are, are not the best, and the Alpine stereo, although it is an upgrade over the one they previously used, is still not fabulous. The quality of materials in here is a bit of a mixed bag. This car is fitted with Alcantara, which I'm not a fan of. When the 400 was around, you had to pay quite a premium to get either the Alcantara or leather pack. Nowadays, the leather pack is standard. However, there isn't as much leather as there used to be. Case in point, the bottom of these doors used to be a beautiful, nice leather, and now is just the cheapest carpet imaginable. As standard, these cars don't even come with these Sparco seats, they come with the same fixed bucket seats you get in an Exige, and no back seats. In fact, if you want this car in 2 plus 2 specification, you have to spend an extra 5 grand on options. That's a bit nuts, and the real killer is the fact that Lotus want you to spend £3,500 for these Sparco seats, which are, are, are pretty good, they're a lot better than the Sparco seats that came in the 400. They are the same model, they're just made better. But you used to get those free. And I paid £68,000 for my Evora 400 when it was brand spanking new. A new one is 30 grand more. Now on the outside you do have quite a bit of carbon fibre if you're a fan of that. You've got the access panel here, you've got the roof, you've got that absolutely stunning tailgate, which is properly beautiful. That was introduced with the old 410 Sport and honestly love it, love it, love it, love it. Annoyingly, the panel in between the roof and the rear tailgate is still a jet black. There's a few reasons that people have why that, that panel has never been made in carbon fiber. One of them being that it will be very hard to get the weave on all three panels to match up. However, the old Evora GTE that Mansory built, they had carbon on all three panels. They got the weave to match up. And it's the sort of thing that I'd expect to be done on a £100,000 car. 
generally in here it's sort of business as usual there are detailed changes from my own 400 but nothing major you've got a little bit of extra chrome around the air vents you've got a little plaque down there saying hand built in england which is something i never really agree with because it says hand built in england by carl knights now i think i've met carl carl's lovely but carl didn't build this entire car i, I don't quite know why they decided to, to put that down there I'm not a fan of this silver colour, I think it's a, a little dour for something like this, but they are of course available in other colours. And one of the things I will say for Lotus is that of all the manufacturers, if you want to customise, you want to personalise your car, do little things, have different coloured stitching, a fancy exterior colour, they are one of the easiest to work with on that front, and also one of the most reasonably priced. Lotus also have a back catalogue of some pretty amazing colours to choose from, so if you want to do something a little bit special, that's not too difficult. There are other small changes in here which are inspired I think by the GT430 including the white and red contrast stitching which is nice but overall the interior of one of these things is a bit of a mixed bag. The exterior is definitely far more of a success and this thing looks every inch junior supercar. And if you're watching this video and you are currently considering perhaps the purchase of a, a new 911 which is roughly similar money, you might be thinking why on earth would I possibly do that? When you look at just how far advanced the 911 cockpit, cabin and experience is, the Lotus would have to be something very, very special indeed to justify its asking price. Fortunately, it is. Now that Toyota V6 gets an awful lot of stick for being sourced from a fairly humble vehicle and not being the most exciting power plant in the world. Uh, yes, most other manufacturers at this price point are going to give you a more exciting engine, but this thing does the job and it is at least fairly durable. But you don't really buy this kind of car for the engine, you buy it for the way that it drives. And this really, truly is the best. There's no two ways about it. An Evora is a magnificent thing. At lower speeds, the suspension is a little on the firm side. The car's certainly not as supple as the original car, but to be fair, the original Evora, particularly in naturally aspirated trim, is just magical. It rides ludicrously well. The benefit of this stiffer setup is the fact that you have infinitely more body control when you are really pressing on. You have to consider the fact that this has another sort of 130 horsepower on top of that original car. Whilst it might not be the most effective power plant out there, it's certainly one of the best sounding. gearbox is also fabulous. It was the early car's Achilles heel. Many of them were actually truly woeful, but Lotus worked hard to create this, which is the same as the exposed linkage you may have seen in the Elise and the Exige, and it's genuinely one of the best in the business. Throttle response is usually perfect, which means you can heal in tow, and the way the car talks to you and moves, it's fabulous. Now its outright grip levels are definitely some way short of, say, the current 911s. But what it does is speak to you in the same way that an old 911 did. Now I'm talking about the Porsche a lot. I've often said that the best thing to compare a Lotus with is something really like a Ferrari or a McLaren. And much of the way that this car is built makes the case for it being a cut price McLaren. Now as it happens, for the sort of 90 to 100 grand you'd pay for a new one of these, you could actually pick up a used McLaren. However, those have a very well earned reputation for being mm, 
less than easy to live with in terms of running costs. They do break, and when they break, they are ruddy expensive. I am never going to claim that Lotus ownership will be a trouble-free experience because I could not make that claim for any manufacturer. However, they do seem to be making strides in terms of build quality and the people that I know with newer cars generally seem to be much happier with them. I think the reasonably long gearing is always something that sort of hampered the Evora a little bit. Yes, it has plenty of mid-range torque, but if they geared it just that little bit shorter, I think it would pull that much harder. However, when you get into a groove with it, it's a magnificent thing and you can really make progress. The great thing is that you don't really need the engine to be the strongest because you can carry an awful lot of speed through the corners simply by the way the car speaks to you. It just turns like nothing else it really does. The view out the front is magical and when you're in this thing it really does feel like a supercar. It's not a supercar but that never really bothered me. There's a lot of other stuff that you get by owning a Lotus too. It's the sort of stuff that I really do miss about mine. You get waves from other Lotus owners. You can always speak to people. It's a brilliant, friendly community. Pretty much every person out there that buys a Lotus is a passionate petrol head. Oh, wow, this car is just everything. The whole package is just this single-minded machine for driving joy. When I bought my Evora 400, it was, on paper, the slowest of all of the cars that I was looking at. It was also the only one that spoke to me with this kind of clarity. This is not the sort of thing that you experience in any old car. This sort of interaction, this sort of feedback is the kind of thing reserved only for the absolute best. And I have been fortunate enough to drive Ferraris, McLarens, Lamborghinis, all that kind of stuff. And I really absolutely mean it when I say that in terms of driver involvement, even they struggle to match the brilliance of this. Now I simply can't justify in any meaningful way this car's asking price. Fortunately, there are some used examples out there, like this one. This one is up for 74995 making it the cheapest 2019 GT4 10 Sport in the country. And at 75 grand, I really can make the case for it. It's cheaper than a complete bare bones, poverty spec, entry level 911 Carrera 2. It looks way better. It's far more special to own, to drive. It sounds an awful lot better, mostly because I think Lotus has been kind of cheeky and they've pretended that this is still the same 410 Sport as they were always making, which means that this does not have petrol particulate filters and it does have an exhaust button, meaning you can get those noises out of it. Yeah, sure, the interior is now a couple of generations behind, but honestly, hand on heart, and if you've seen my 992 review, you will know, that new car, it's just lost something. And if you are the sort of person that agrees with me, you've driven one of those, you're going, ah, I always loved my old 911s, always loved the way that they felt, but you want a new car, please, please drive one of these. It's going to be more hassle than your 911. Of that, I can nearly assure you. But I can also completely and totally promise you that it is worth every single moment. And things are only getting better for Lotus at the minute. There's money at the factory. Many, many rumours flying around of new cars, new models and things like that. I have genuinely no idea about what is coming next. However, I can tell you that whatever replaces this, this car may be facelifted soon. How severe the facelift will be, I couldn't say. But right here, right now, this thing is absolutely spectacular. And it's the exact sort of car that, although they're not selling very well at the minute and the Evora never has, I promise you, the moment it is gone, 
every single journalist is going to come out and say, why didn't you buy a Lotus Evora when you still could? Because it is properly brilliant, it is pure driving, it is a hard thing to find these days, nobody does it better than Lotus. And honestly, you got to drive an Evora. If you're watching this channel, it means you care about cars. You owe it to yourself to drive one, please. I was kind of worried that this car will maybe not be as good as I remembered it. It really is. It really, really is. Thank you for watching. A huge big thank you to Mark at Norfolk Lotus for sorting me out with this car. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.